Yeah, we're going to need a little bit more, all right? So I'm, I'm a high-energy kind of guy. How are we doing today? Great. 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 Really good. Okay, so who is a Longhorn fan here? Come on. That'll get you fired up. Longhorn Nation. Yeah, feeling good. We're in the college playoff series. And I tell you, I'm a transplant. I'm an adopted fan. I'm a Jersey guy. And so I got Sicilian. I got a little bit of mafia up in me. And also got a little, little bit of time with uh, Snooky in the Jersey Shore. So I'm that guy. But I've been here in Texas almost 10 years, and I feel like I'm almost like engrafted. I'm adopted. I've got my Texas flag. I've got my Texas Longhorns in the house. So I'm excited about the Longhorns, which is pretty cool. So glad you are too. Well, look, I want to get something out of the way, which is the most important thing, and that is I am six foot nine. I do not want you spending your whole time wondering how tall I am, okay? Yes, I played basketball. And the last question, yes, the weather is gorgeous up here. So we can get through all that. We're going to have a great day, great time with it. So what I wanted to kind of connect with you about today is we're going to go ahead and huddle up. I'm a coach. I like the concept of huddling. And so in that journey, we're going to do a little heat check with you. We're going to see how we were kind of really feeling today. So in the mid-90s, I was playing and trying out for the Chicago Bulls. And in that, that was the Michael Jordan heyday era. And we used to have a thing where we kind of break the huddle. We would say, what time is it? And the team would say, game time. So it was a way to separate from our mind what was going on in the world and what would need to happen right now. So we'd say, what time is it? Game time. It's a little different today because I kind of founded a program called Growth Time. So there's lots of times and seasons that we go through in life. There's lots of times that happen in our lives, but it's always growth time. So when I say what time it is, I want you to say, growth time. And you got to use that language, okay? you got to grow time, okay? So what time is it? Time. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's get a little warm up. I know it's Monday. What time is it? Time. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. So here we are in the uh, spring of 2020. COVID is raging. I'm nervous to go to the grocery store. I'm like, I might get infected and die. So if you recall the anxiety that's going around the spring of 2020, that's the journey I'm on. Just got furloughed and spent almost 20 years in the fitness industry after playing professional basketball for a few years. And spent 20 years with a group called 24-Hour Fitness. We're furloughed. Now, that's enough as it is. I was a mid-senior level manager. I ran the Austin market and the Midwest market for 24-Hour Fitness Centers and operations. And we're furloughed. Now, the backdrop, too, is I'm also dealing with a broken heart. I'm also dealing with the heaviness of heart. So about two months before COVID happened, I'm going through something very tragic in my life. It's this dreaded D word, going through a divorce that I didn't expect, didn't see, and it's just wrecking ravage. It's just ravaging through the home. Three kids, 122, 118, one, almost 17 at the moment. But it's a painful journey I'm walking through. So I've got this personal journey I'm trying to navigate. Got COVID, got this space where uh, we're furloughed. And all of a sudden, the phone call comes. 450 employees to 24 hour fitness on one call. Hey, we no longer needed your service. 17 years, gone. Family, gone. The dog died, my Max dog. My Max, 150 pound mountain dog, died. It's a bad country song, y'all. It's a really bad country song. And I've been signed on some of this journey as an athlete before, but it's about overcoming defeat. And I gotta say that everyone here today is dealing with the sense of what it feels to feel like defeated. When you feel like you're getting beat up, you feel discouraged, you feel frustrated, and you're kind of fighting through. But there's a sense of defeat that all of us as people have to learn and grow to rise above if we're gonna fulfill our purpose, if we're gonna find that next career, if we're gonna find that next opportunity. So I find myself in that spot in the spring of 2020, and I'm trying to take deep breaths. I'm trying to draw upon the strength or some thoughts, and how can I overcome these defeats? So I'm going to start today with the thought. Now I've got to get my clicker. This is where it begins. Oh, wrong slide. Mindset changes behavior. And that didn't come out as well as I'd like. But mindset changes behavior. If you're a note taker, write that down. Seems easy, but it's deep. Mindset changes behavior. When you think about your journey, 
Think about something you've been through in life and recall it right now. When has your mindset changed and that's changed your behavior? When has your mindset changed and your behavior has changed because of it? A lot of people go to, hey, their fitness and their health. Man, I was out of shape. I wasn't doing well. I had a back injury. I had this. And I had to change my mindset to say I need to do something to take care of me. And so then my behavior changed. And I found that gym. I found that trainer. Some people go to their leadership career. Gosh, I was so self-focused in my leadership. I didn't know how to delegate. I wanted to fix everything. And I didn't know how to empower others. But once I shifted my mindset, my behavior changed. We've all been through the, the self-focus stage of life. And we've had to shift sometimes our mindset where it's not just about us. It's not about our world. And therefore, our behavior changed. So what we're coached through today is mindset will change your behavior. So wherever you're at at this moment and wherever you're at at this space you're walking through, if our mindset changes, our behavior will change. So I'm thinking you've got something in your head. Hopefully it's a positive story how your mindset changed, right? That you didn't go crazy and postal on the road. But somewhere you're thinking about, where's my mindset shifted in a positive way? And that's caused my behavior to change. Because my hope today, and this is the vision I have for the 30 minutes we're going to spend together. My vision is that you walk out of here today a little more confident, a little bit more pep in your step, a little bit more resolve, a little bit more ready to go fight the world, a little bit more ready to overcome the defeats that you're feeling. Because the truth is, and I've known, I've been through this job search in 2020 and 21, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be here. If life was going according to plan or your plan, you'd be in the career, you'd be in a good space, things would be blossoming, things would be moving forward in a positive way. So I'm not under any grand delusion, neither are you, that the goal is to get out of this room. Like this is like the pseudo hunger games, you want to get out, you don't want to stay in. So I can appreciate that. So we can today just move you a little bit. Just move small steps of your mindset, then that breakthrough's gonna come. That transition's gonna come. Sounds good? All right, what time is it? Time. Pretty good. What time is it? Time. Ooh, sounds good. Okay. Where I wanna start with you is the first mindset that had to take place in the spring of 2020 for me to move forward in a positive direction. So, this is a cool little histor historical backdrop. But Hernando Cortez in 1519, Hernando Cortez in 1519 was a Spanish explorer, and he came over to the New World. And he had a vision to go actually take some land and take some space, and he brought 600 men to the New World, across the big ocean, to be able to take this new land, overcome the Aztecs, and really seek opportunity, which was gold back then, right? Cash, money, gold, which we all have need of. But he had this vision for it. And so he took his 600 men, he travels all the way across the ocean in 1519, on this exploratory adventure. He lands, and the first thing he does, anyone know what the first thing he does? The first thing he does is he burns the ships. He burns the ships. He sends a message to his whole group of 600, we ain't going back, not today. We're not going back to where we went because we're going to go to where we need to get to. So he burns the ships. So for those who like visuals, we will go ahead and talk about a mindset. Three powerful mindsets, and this is number one. Burn the ships. And that's hard. It's hard because a lot of times as people, and I experienced this in 2020 and at different points in my journey, and I've coached many people through this space, we hold on to our past. We fantasized, romanticized, it was better back then. It felt good in that spot. It was comfortable. It was easy. Oh, this is hard to go attack and take ground. It's easy to go back. I want to go back. Why can't it be like it used to be? Gosh, if this didn't happen with the boss, if they didn't get furloughed, if they didn't eliminate my job, and maybe some people here made a mistake. Gosh, I wish I wasn't such an idiot. I wouldn't have lost my job if it wasn't for my stupidity. Could be any of those reasons. But the mindset to embrace, the number one, is burn the ships. There's something you need to let go of in this journey. There's something you need to let go of and not look back or turn your mind back to. And it's not easy. 
burning is not fun. Letting go is not comfortable. But it makes a statement to you. So in my space, I had to let go. Look, that culture, that community, the one I love in the corporate world is gone. I can't go back to it. I can't recreate it. That space in my life and journey is done. I had to face the grips, too, with the personal journey, which is painful. Everything I identified as a person, as a man, as a father, and that unity, it, it, man, my gosh, it hurts. And there's still sometimes a little bit of space to share with you that's painful. But my mindset can't be longing for a past or longing for something because it's not going to get me where I need to go. So the first mindset you think through is where do I need to burn the ship? Really the first challenging question I'd ask you, because I'm asking you three challenging questions today. That's what coaches do. We challenge you. We challenge you to move forward in a way that gets you where you need to go. But the first question you got to answer today is right here. What ship needs to be burned? What do you need to burn? Is it going to be easy? No. Because you're going to want to go back to a certain way of thinking. You're going to want to go back to a certain pattern. Something's got to burn. Something's got to burn in order for you to move forward. So I want you to think about that. If you already got that in your mind, write it down. Write it down what needs to be let go of today. What needs to burn up? And you want to overcome defeat, my experience is, that was number one. My experience is even today, there's a place where you have to let go of an envisioned past that you still think is going to happen, and it's not. That allows more space for opportunity to come in your mind, for good things to come forward, because you're not focused on that past. You're not going back. I'm going forward. That's question one on the mindset. Question two, we're going to get to it, okay? So if mindset number one, in order to overcome defeat, is focused on burning the ships and moving past the past, mindset number two is gratitude changes everything. Gratitude changes everything. We've heard it. We've had a lot of gratitude messages during COVID. Uh, I'm going to give you a different slant on it today about gratitude. We're going to chat a little bit about it because what time is it? Yeah, we're getting good at this. Y'all getting good, right? It is growth time. So recently I've been coaching two clients, uh, one male, one female, man, woman, not together, separate people, but they had a similar story. And so both business leaders, both business professionals, and it was kind of unique because they came with these stories in these coaching sessions and overwhelmed, fatigued, frustrated with leadership, disappointed, each had a personal relationship that they're wrestling with which I'm sure everyone here has the same thing, but they were wrestling through this story. And as we began to coach, I'm like, man, this is turning into a therapy session, right? I'm like, wow, coaching's really geared to help you move and break past barriers from where you are to where you need to go. And here we are in the first 20 minutes with therapy, and I'm actually allowing them space to, to get everything out of their mind, their heart, on all the things they're overwhelmed and frustrated with. I said, awesome. I said, wow, is there anything else? I said, this seems horrible. We should just, what do we do? It sounds like it sounds like we should just throw in a towel. And all of a sudden, it hit him. But wait, there are some good things. I said, oh, really? What are some of the good things, and what is a healthy, good perspective you could take with all the stuff and defeat you're dealing with? It was amazing. From the internal space, they started to qualify and clarify a sense of gratitude things that they could take away that were positive in that moment, in that space, what they were walking through. And it wasn't vague, oh, I thank, I'm thankful for God, I'm thankful for family, I'm thankful for this. I coached them through getting really specific things they're in a grateful space for. And you'd be amazed. Things shifted. Clarity came. All of a sudden, the last 20 minutes of that coaching session, they found solutions. They found outcomes. They found pathways to start charging forward rather than staying stuck in this feeling of defeated, just staying stuck like down. We used to call it in basketball, like down in your stance. You ever hold the wall squat for a little bit? <laughs> Y'all want to do it real quick? No. Okay. You guys got to burn those ships, okay? You got to burn those ships, all right? But just holding it, and it was like, my goodness, things started to change in the coaching session. By the time that time was over, not only gratitude come in, but clarity of direction came in. Mindset changes behavior. 
their mindset had shifted, so now their behaviors and actions could shift, which is powerful. So that's a story I found in my own journey in 2020. I knew if I woke up each day and I didn't put on a spirit or space of gratitude and get very specific with it, I was going to get swallowed up by defeat. I was going to get swallowed up. And that's the work. If mindset changes behavior, was I waking up and intentionally being clear about what I was grateful for? And not necessarily isolated to the things I have or the past or where I was at, but grateful for what's going to come in the future. Is there a gratitude that the opportunities are out there, that your best days are ahead of you, that God's best for your life is still going to come forward? Is there gratitude of that the opportunity could come this week, that that breakthrough could come? Are you grateful for what's going to happen, not just for what you have? And so I started to put on a spirit of gratitude. The same thing I coach these clients to is, what could you be thankful and grateful for that's going to happen? And it began to change everything. It began to change how I felt. It began to change my outlook. And then guess what? My behavior changed. I was more motivated to get up because I still had to go look for a job. I spent over a year looking for a role in a job. I spent that time looking, hunting, interviews, connections, relationships. We're in the middle of COVID. The fitness industry shut down. I'm outside looking for different spaces to even explore. Nothing. Closed door after closed door. Y'all, it sucks. Like, there's no way around it. It's defeating. But gratitude is this powerful space that can carry your mindset to overcome defeat day by day. And I'll share with you, in that story in 2020, um, as I overcame defeat, things started to clear up. I worked with a coach, had a powerful coaching session, got a vision for growth time, got a vision for what I'm doing now, helping change the world I influence, and helping people through the coaching aspect. Started growth time as a platform, started coaching, kept looking for work as I was kind of navigating growth time, built out a coaching platform, journey of writing a book, writing a blog, and I stepped moving forward and taking actions because gratitude was in me because opportunity was present. Opportunity could exist because I was grateful that my best days were ahead, they weren't behind. And I had to get that gratitude to even begin to believe that, to get past the discouragement, to get past the because gratitude changes everything as a mindset. There's a, there's a good book, I call God the great growth coach. That's my fun name for God, the great growth coach because he's always in the growth. And in his playbook, your Bible, it talks about give thanks to God in everything for this is the will of God. Well, why is it the will of God you give thanks? Because <laughs> it opens up your behavior. It changes your behavior. Because you're not focused on what's not. You're focused on what you can be grateful can happen. God wants us to be grateful because he knows it's the will because it moves us in a positive, powerful direction. It doesn't keep us stuck in defeat and weighed down by despair. There is a next step. And that's a powerful space to come from. Come from. I'll get that word. Time for a water break. Coach calls a 20-second timeout real quick. <laughs> so what time is it? Time. I want the twang. Like, growth time! Can you all do that? That's a little bit Jersey ghetto, like, you know, gangster style, but what time is it? Time. I'm feeling better. Y'all make me feel at home now. All right. What's one thing you are grateful for that's going to happen this week? I want you to write it down. I don't want anything vague. Oh, I'm going to be grateful I'm going to see my kid. I'm going to be grateful that I'm going to pray. I'm going to be grateful. No, I want something very specific you want to be grateful that's going to happen this week. You're going to be grateful that what? That a relationship's going to come forward, that a connection, that an uh, interview is going to go well. Would you start believing and being grateful for something positive that's going to happen? Hope's a rare commodity. We need hope. Very linked to gratitude. What's that one thing? First challenge we had was what ship needs to burn? Burn the ship. Second challenge is what's one specific thing you're grateful is going to happen? And it's not necessarily what you have to go do. It's, man, you get the opportunity to go do it. You get the opportunity to go look for something new. You get the opportunity to build more relationships. Second one. Third one. 
boy, if you're a Longhorn fan and you're an athlete, you're going to love this one. Okay? Third mindset that began to shift within me to overcome defeat, that I have to coach through this on a consistent basis. You all ready for number three mindset? Yes. yes. I love it. Front row's loving that. I'm feeling that. Okay. Third one. <sighs> Take a breath. No, that's not it. Let's go back. I think you got mixed up here. No? Are we there? Help. Oh, there it was. Grinding for greatness. Grinding. Oh, this is the hard one. Woo! This is where the work comes in. Grinding for greatness. So there's a purpose in the grind. That we'd overcome defeat can't settle for average or less. You weren't created to. You weren't intended to. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't create garbage. He's just not in that business. We're created for greatness. And grinding for greatness is such a valuable mindset to embrace. And you could say that to yourself each day. Craig shared it briefly with you. I'm going to elaborate for a second on it. So part of the journey in uh, 2021, now about like six months into helping support coaching in this growth time model, I started a concept called Monday Movers Mindset. Monday's for movers. Monday's the hardest day of the week. Without any reprieve you feel like you're taking relax on Sunday, Monday hits you in the face, right? How many, how many got hit in the face today on Monday? Come on. Like, I, I know what you're working through. I've been through it. It hits you in the face. It's like a punch. It's like, oh. Seeking, searching, taking a step to look for another opportunity. What's next, Lord? Where do I go? Who's the right person? Who's the Monday is a monster. It just is. It's a monster. So, but Monday is for movers. Monday is for movers. So I started a blog, you know, a newsletter chain, a couple thousand people goes out to. It's called Monday Movers Mindset. Because part of the journey overcoming defeat, I knew I needed a fresh mindset each week. I needed need something fresh. And y'all need something fresh. If your mindset changes, your behavior changes. If your mindset changes, your behavior changes. So Monday's for movers. And this is a mindset game we're in. If you can grab one of these mindsets, burn the ships, gratitude changes everything, grinding for greatness. And that's your mantra the whole week. That's what you hold on to the whole week. You wake up in the morning, you play the game, you go attack it, you know it's growth time, and you say, hey, this week, I'm intentionally going to burn some ships. Hey, intentionally, I'm going to put gratitude changes everything. Intentionally, I'm going to grind for greatness. Mindset will change your behavior. It's not easy, but it's the pathway to get to that next level, to get to that next opportunity. And grinding is not a joy, but it can be if it's your mindset. If it's in you that you've got to take the steps today, yes, you're going to have to make some phone calls. Yes, you're going to have to network. Yes, you're going to have to reach out to people. Yes, you might have to do some work in journaling and explore. What is your purpose? I know at Purpose Works here, rebranding, you know, JSN, the Purpose Works, they offer an eight-week course, right? And how to really identify your purpose and get clarity on that so that you can align that with your job, your work, your career, and then, boom, magic happens. Not only have you broken through defeat in the moment in the barriers, but now you're breaking through in the real world. They come together. But grinding's part of the journey. So what steps do they need to take this week? So I want you to think about that. That's your third challenge. Where do you need to grind this week? Where do you need to grind? And it's probably the least favorite thing you can think about. It's probably the one you're like, oh, I wish you didn't say anything. I wish you didn't have to do that. It's like as a fitness coach, you tell somebody to do burpees. It's like, oh, my gosh, not a burpee. I don't want to do this. I'm out. But yet, if you want to grind for greatness and there's a purpose attached to it, my goodness, you're going to overcome defeat because it's in the action of moving that we build confidence. It's in the action of taking a step forward. We build resolve. We build mental toughness. We build and grow when we grind for greatness. So I'll kind of share a little story with it because I like it. And it's something I've been kind of walking through in my own personal journey now in life as it sits to try to overcome. Um, some of you all know, and I know this is a faith-based kind of group to some degree, there's a story of Jericho. So some of you all know the story of Jericho. 
Um, it was a battle, an epic battle, thousands of years ago. And his group called Israel, which is obviously in the news, uh, big time these days. Uh, but Israel was coming out of a wilderness. And in many ways, when you're searching for a job, is it not a wilderness? <laughs> Come on. You spent years with it. It feels like a wilderness. It feels like you're left. It feels like you're isolated. It feels like you can be alone. But they've made this march, and they're coming out of this wilderness experience, and they're going to take this land, much like Hernando Cortez. Different motives, but yet they were going to go do it. But they're taking this land, and they come to this place called Jericho, and the kind of the marching orders is walk around the city. Walk around the city one time each day for six days, and then the seventh time, walk around seven times. Uh, okay. So think about this. You've got tens of thousands of people gearing up, armoring up, right? They're getting ready for that day. It's Monday. They're gearing up, and they're going to have to go walk, armor, heavy, loaded, ready for war. And they're going to walk around the city. Let's call it the size of Austin. It's a lot of miles, y'all. And so they're having to grind step by step, day by day. They're taking those steps. They're grinding through it. They're walking around that wall. They're walking. They're taking that steps positive forward, and they're building their confidence. They're building that energy. And they do that for six days, and the seventh day, it's like, we're winded, coach. <laughs> Dude, we're tired. We've been doing this for six days. All right, next up, seven times. Seven times. And I think sometimes when you're trying to overcome defeat, it feels like a seven times day. Like this week could feel like seven times. Holiday season coming up, family, relationships, financial pressures, what's next. It could feel like a seven-day challenge in life. Feels like it. Man, got to keep grinding. Got to keep grinding. I burn the ship. I get this gratitude going. Got to keep grinding step by step, step by step. I know walls will fall down. Something's got to break through. And if I don't keep grinding and I stop, Nothing's going to happen. Nothing changes. Mindset changes, behavior. It's in all of you. To overcome defeat, grinding for greatness is taking that next step. Taking that next step. Even if it feels like seven days and you're marching around Jericho, keep taking that next step because keep taking it. It's going to break through. It's going to open up. It's going to change. I could share with you, after a year of kind of like in this space of navigating this growth time journey of entrepreneurialism, searching for roles and jobs because I had bills and stuff to pay, but nothing's coming up. Eventually, things opened. Not only did the growth time churn continue to expand, got an opportunity to install a website that I put together, got an opportunity to do a whole host of contract coaching. Oh, the fitness world started to shift. Got a knock on my door. Hey, be a business coach. We love what you're doing. Be a business coach. Call, coach all these owners and help them navigate so they can grow their business, their leadership, their lives. I'm like, man, just keep grinding. Keep taking that step. It's going to break. But you've got to overcome defeat. If you stay defeated, nothing changes. Nothing shifts. And mindset changes behavior. Mindset changes behavior. What time is it? Time. That was good. I'm feeling good. That was really good, really good. I'll leave you with one last thought. So here's us as we as people. If mindset changes behavior, identity repeats behavior. Because as your mindset starts to shift and it gets stronger, it becomes like a stronghold. And as your mindset continues to get stronger and shift and be challenged and be trained, it becomes part of you, becomes your identity, becomes who you are. That's why you all got fired up about Longhorns. You're like, yeah, Longhorns, let's go. Woo, they're in you. They're part of your identity. So as soon as I said it, it was like, ha, 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 celebrate. It's who you are. It's what you believe in. And if mindset changes behavior, when this is in our identity, when you identify with this, burn the ships, gratitude changes everything, grinding for greatness, and that becomes that identity in you. You're just going to keep repeating the behavior. You're just going to repeat it, repeat it, repeat it, 
and the life you want, the vision you have, the new future that's out there waiting for you to grab is going to take place. It's going to happen. But you have the power of choice. We all have the power and choice. So my message, my hope today is that you take that, okay? They want to hammer that last thing. Where do you need to grind? I think I asked that challenge. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to actually give you space here, right? I've got about two more minutes. Boom. Like, look, where do you need to grind this week? Write it down. I don't want you thinking about it up here. I want it out in front of you. So write it down. Where do you need to grind this week? What needs to happen? Okay? Thoughts, clarity, clutter, all up in the head. Nothing happens till it's out in front of you. You can see it. So write it down. You're more likely to do it. Actually, 33% more likely to do it. Write down what the areas you need to grind this week. It's already come to your mind. You've already thought about it a little bit. But let's get it out in front of us. Now, if you really want to be powerful, anyone want to really be powerful? Hey, who wants to be really stretched today? Or how much feel like, holy crap, I already got stretched enough. Who wants to be really stretched? Got one person. Okay, cool. Two. Okay. I want you to send what you said you're going to grind to somebody. I want you to send it. Hey, look, I got coached this morning. <laughs> I got challenged to send my grind list to you so that you know and I know this is what my intentionality is to go grind this week to go do. I guarantee your integrity will help you show up better on that field and that game if you do that. I guarantee it. Take that opportunity. I know as a self kind of starter mindset person I am, I still do that. I'll text my mom. <laughs> no one else. I'll text my mom. Hey, mom, this is what I'm doing this week. She's like, okay, cool, Quinn. That's really great. Thanks, man. Cool. But it's more for me because I'm putting it out there to another person what I'm going to go grind to go do. And that sets an intentionality for. So for the few people that raise your hand that want to be really great, Take what you said, your grind list, two or three things that you're going to go intentionally do this week and send it out to somebody. Send it to your mom. Send it to your dad. Send it to your kid. Hey, kid, son, I got coached today. Here's what I need to grind for. I'm going to go do it. Then put, how about you? <laughs> All right, I really appreciate y'all. Um, I could probably stay for about, you know, a few minutes if there's any questions um, about it. But I wanted to finish off one last time. If y'all could stand up because you've been sitting real quick. All right, and motion gets movement, so I'm going to hear it one time really loud and proud. What time is it? Real time. Ooh, thank you. You all have been great. I'm believing for great things for you. Okay.